Oh man, we've watched the movies with the guy liking the girl, them having a fun little montage of them laughing or doing something cute, and they get in some kind of argument that brings them closer together, and bam, they fall in love, they're together. And when we're done watching, we think, why am I so alone? So if you're a Christian who has the desire to be married, and you find yourself incredibly single, you've come to the right place, my friends. Now, don't think of singleness as a bad thing. You have to see it as a potential season of great growth. Not gonna lie though, it's tough. So we've provided four tips for you should you want to prepare for a future relationship. Tip number one, be someone capable of love. 1 John 3, 16, by this we know love, because Jesus laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Please note that biblically, love is not an emotion. It's an action. Sometimes love includes emotion, but not all the time. How did Jesus love? He died a painful death for us, regardless of how he felt, so we can have eternal life. Put simply, true love is putting someone else's needs above our own no matter the cost. Know this, if you want to enter into a relationship, it takes hard work. So while you're single, you should be moving in the direction of being able to take care of yourself and have the capacity to support and take care of another person. And that would mean supporting your loved one and their fears, insecurities, and weaknesses. So whether you're a guy or a girl, you need to be capable of bringing something to the relationship, whether it's physical, emotional, or spiritual protection or provision. Some practical ways to grow in love? Get a job, learn to work hard, save money, manage your finances wisely, be healthy, live with integrity, and don't cut corners by cheating. You can start making the effort to cut off any addictions that would be harmful to the relationship. Learn to pray and read your Bible on your own and learn how to be a good friend. All that to say, be responsible for yourself and for others so that your life can provide the love that's needed for a relationship. Tip number two, learn to evaluate good character. If you're a guy, pay attention to Proverbs 31.30. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. And to you ladies, look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. I'll address the guys first and then the girls. For some reason, we guys can be completely blinded by a woman's looks and figure. And guess what? Great men of power like Samson, Solomon, and David were all taken down by beautiful women. Know this, you need more than a pretty face when it comes to being in a relationship. You need a God-fearing woman of character that works hard, is respectful, and brings honor in what she does because looks can deceive and will fade with time. And ladies, note Ephesians when it commands husbands to love their wives the same way Jesus loved the church. Yeah, Jesus was willing to die for the church. So as you look at guys that interest you, pay close attention to his character and ask yourself, is he someone that sacrifices himself for others? Does he give of his time, his energy, his strength or his finances, or is he selfish? To all the ladies and gentlemen watching this, know that real relationships need more than nice hair and an attractive physique. Life comes with its fair share of struggles, so you need a person of character that is willing to support you through life's ups and downs. So learn to see past their beauty and see if they are someone that works hard, is respectful, and lives with integrity. Tip number three, learn to be content in God. Colossians chapter two, verses nine to 10. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. This passage was written to the Colossian church that was being deceived into thinking that they needed more than just Jesus. And the application we need to take from this is that you right now in your singleness do not need a partner. Let me explain the dangers of why this is important. If you allow your heart to reach a place where you become completely dependent on another person, you're only one step away from being shattered. If you get in that kind of a relationship, that person can become an idol and a kind of God to you. 
you'd spend time with them, serve them, and love them, and that's fine and all. But what happens if the relationship doesn't work out? Or something happens to them? I'll say this, you can't put all of your hope in a relationship. You are complete in Christ. In Him, you have your salvation, your hope, with access to love and wisdom. Now, it is okay to want and desire a relationship, that's fine. At the same time though, never allow a relationship to be your God. Those who put their full dependence upon a person will surely be broken. You must learn to stand on your own and understand that you are made for more than just romantic love. For those who follow Jesus, know that he is all that you need. And should you think otherwise, really learn and see just how good Jesus is. Tip number four, own your choice and take responsibility. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5. Do we not have a right to take along a believing wife, even as the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? 1 Corinthians 7, 9. But if they do not have self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Now, just because I said we need to be content in God alone doesn't mean we don't have the freedom to be in a relationship. You can choose to be married. In fact, Paul encourages people to get married if they have a burning desire for intimacy. So if this is you, that's okay. To be married is a very good thing. So if you want to be married, own that choice. And if you've reached a place of greater emotional, spiritual, and financial maturity, start putting yourself in places where you can meet like-minded people who also want to serve and love God. Now, does God play a role in helping you find your partner? Yes. And at the same time, you should do your part if you choose to pursue marriage. Marriage is a good thing that takes work. So we should put in the work if we actually want it. So yes, give your ambitions for marriage to God, but don't use it as an excuse to cover up potential laziness. All right, we hope this helps. So if you're single in hopes of being in a relationship one day, remember these four tips. Tip number one, be someone capable of love. Tip number two, learn to evaluate good character. Tip number three, learn to be content in God. And tip number four, own your choice and take responsibility. Now remember, if you find yourself longing for a partner, that's okay, keep growing. And know that if you ever feel like there's not enough love in your life, you can rest knowing that Jesus loves you.